everyone. Melinda here at Mindy's Craft Shack. How y'all doing today? I have put together everything that I use to do my tumblers. So this is just kind of like a tutorial on what you need and um, to get started on doing your own tumblers. Uh, you can do it pretty cheaply uh, through just going to the dollar store. So the first thing we're gonna grab are our different kinds of cups that we use. Um, for those of you that have never done this, I uh, would recommend going to the dollar store and picking up these little, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 ounces. They're uh, great to practice on. You, and for a buck, you can't go wrong. So um, these cups at the dollar store, go ahead, pick some up. You can start practicing on them. Um, other cups that I have, I get actually from Hog. Um, it, actually, the name is Stainless, uh, the Stainless Depot, sorry. <laughs> um, and I get Hydro Flasks, um, wine cups. Uh, we have a 20 ouncer. You can get Slims and moder modern curve cups. All stainless steel, double walled, um, great insulation. Also, you can get these stainless steel coffee mugs, and they're about 14 ounces. Again, that's through Stainless Depot. Um, she always has a lot of sales on there, on cups. So whenever there's a cup that I'm looking for and she's having a good sale, I just stock up on them then. So when you're doing mugs and cups, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I use on these is electrical tape. I tape off right around there. Uh, Trinica wants to know, do they have to be stainless cups? No, they don't. You can do the plastic cups. You can do uh, like the glass cups that you get at the uh, coffee cups that you get at the dollar store. Um, anything. You can do literally anything. I've used uh, like wine bottles. I've done uh, decorations on so yeah you can use whatever you can use acrylic epoxy will adhere to anything so um like i was saying on this um you can you want to tape around the rim here so i just get electrical tape you can get this at the dollar store and uh to do your taping on the modern curve and cups like this I don't worry about taping unless you want the bottom part here under that line to be silver um, I just do the whole cup and bottom so I don't tape any of these cups the only cups I tape are ones like this and if you need to a handle of a mug you can tape. So also, um, if you don't want to use electrical tape, you can use just ordinary painter's tape. Again, uh, you might be able to find this at the dollar store. I believe I got this one at Home Depot. So um, another thing you want, because you want to do it safely, is you want to make sure you have gloves. The ideal glove is um, nitrile gloves. Um, but I've seen people that use uh, those cooking gloves like you get from the dollar store, um, like the lunch ladies wear in our cafeterias. Um, and those work okay but the best ones to get are the nitrile gloves you can get those off of amazon 
Um, I don't know how expensive they are on Amazon. I can't remember right now. But you can get like a box of a hundred. Uh, so, um, but if you want to start out with the ones that they have at the dollar store, that's perfectly fine. Now what I've done to, so I save myself on those nitrile gloves. I've gone and gotten uh, dish gloves and you can tell that I use these a lot, but I just use them for my spray painting. So when I spray paint a cup, I just put these on then I don't waste my nitrile gloves and I can just use these over and over and again at the dollar store. So, any questions so far? Uh, no questions yet. Uh, Linda Schaefer uh, from Billings, Oklahoma. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Another thing that I use is a mask. Because when you're dealing with epoxy, it can get... Epoxy is very toxic. Um, you might not smell it, but... People have uh, built allergies to the epoxy. So your best bet is to just get one of these masks. This is like an N95 mask. Um, it has an exhaust and it's a cloth mask. Um, I got this one so you guys can hear me when I do... Uh, lives or videos for YouTube I uh, and I was wearing a respirator mask and my voice was so muffled you couldn't hear what I was saying so I switched to this and it works just as well um, if before when I didn't have one of these I honestly just used a regular paper masks that everybody's wearing now so um, anything to help from those fumes from getting in and you breathing them in is going to help Patricia Lagasse, I hope I'm pronouncing that last name correctly, says it's a little hard to hear you. Okay, I'll talk a little louder. Thanks Patricia um, If I do get too quiet, let me know and I'll gladly speak up again um, So Safety-wise, make sure you have gloves, make sure you have a mask. Another thing that I like to use is baby wipes, just ordinary baby wipes. Um, that helps uh, just when, you, after you've put the epoxy on the cup, you always have some epoxy that goes inside the cup. So I like to just take a baby wipe and uh, go around the rim a little bit and baby wipes uh, clear that up real well so um, so we've got that uh, as far as um, getting your cup prepared I use a uh, 60 grit sandpaper and that is before you put anything on it you're gonna sand your cup okay and I always use the 60 grit um, you do that so the spray paint uh, adheres to it nicely and uh, if you want to know how to prepare a cup I have a YouTube video up how to prepare a tumbler um, so just go to Mindy's Craft Shack on YouTube and you can see those videos if you do do that please subscribe and like and make comments I do tend to answer those comments so once you've gone through and prepared your cup it's time to start putting on your glitter and there's three different ways you can do that so I've got uh, just a sample of what I use to put the glitter on. I use, uh, there's one way that you can do it with Mod Podge. 
Um, you can use spray adhesive or you can do the epoxy method. Now next week our class will be on those three different styles of putting on your glitter and I'm gonna go through uh, all three of them next Thursday on how to apply glitter. Um, of course you're gonna need your glitter and you can find uh, my glitter at MCS Glitter Company on Etsy. I've got some chunky here and fine, extra fine glitter. Carol Lewis Hall would like to know, is the spray adhesive good to use? You know, it's not my favorite. It works, it, you know, it's a cheap way to start, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is the epoxy method. Um, I've done all three of them and yeah, epoxy method is my favorite. So, um, also another thing you should have are the silicone mats. And I have one at every station. I have one at where I do my glitter work. I have one under each turner that I have. And I also have one where I uh, package my glitter, mix and package my glitter. These I got at Walmart. They're like, they're under $6. And I use one and I cut it in half to go under my turner. So I'm actually getting two. Um, you can go on Amazon. They do have silicone mats there. Um, but you're just getting one for like 15 bucks. So I just found these at Walmart. I'm not looking for anything spectacular. It's just me working in here. So I just went with this and it works just fine. Um, so when you mix your epoxy, you're gonna need popsicle sticks. Again, you can get these at the dollar store. A bag of like a hundred for a dollar. So, uh, question? Uh, Amanda Cooper Bunyard, I will pronounce the name correctly. Can you wash the cup if you only use Mod Podge? Yes, you can uh, wash the cup if you only use Mod Podge. The thing is, when you use the Mod Podge, you're gonna put glitter over that, and then you're gonna epoxy over that glitter. So once that epoxy cures and everything, you can definitely wash, um, wash that cup with no problem. Um, so like I said, popsicle sticks are uh, great to have. If you are looking to not throw any popsicle sticks away, they do have these silicone sticks that work great. Um, I tend to just go with the popsicle stick. Um, I've used these, but it seems like I get more bubbles. A lot of people say with the popsicle sticks you get more bubbles, but I think because these are so thick, I just tend to get more bubbles. So I try to just uh, use those popsicle sticks, the wooden ones. Dixie cups to mix your epoxy in. When you have your part A and part B, you want something big enough to mix your epoxy in. Just an ordinary Dixie cup. Um, medicine cups to measure out your epoxy. And with that, it's important, at least for me, because I can't see. <laughs> um, especially those lines that they have on there. What I do is I just take a Sharpie and put a line where I want to fill it to. That way I can see and make sure that I'm getting equal parts. Um, let's see here. When you're preparing a cup also, you want to have spray paint. When I first started this, 
I uh, just dove in. I didn't really, uh, you know, know about the spray paint or the any other thing like that. So I would take my cup and just start epoxying or uh, uh, glittering, putting glitter on it, and I'd always have these areas that seemed to not fill in. So then I learned about spray paint, and that's where this comes in really handy. Um, you can see if I was to do this a blue, I would spray paint it blue. If I was, obviously I'm going to do white on here, um, then I'm going to put white glitter on it. And that way, if I have any holes, not like big ones, but small ones, I'm not going to be able to really tell there's, you know, not glitter there. Amber Sullivan says she likes to use a kitchen scale to measure her epoxy. Oh, okay, yeah, you can do that too. Um, I can see where that would definitely work. That's a great idea. So yeah, a kitchen scale would work great. Um, and the spray paints that I use is just Rust-Oleum and I get this at uh, right now at Home Depot they have the bonus bottles for like under four dollars so if you need white spray paint go to Home Depot you can get the 25% more um, but I have them in black I have them in purple yellow uh, what have you, you know, every color imaginable. Also, what I do after I've put on the glitter, I always take my uh, clear spray and I spray over it. Especially when you're doing an ombre and that's two or more colors on the cup. That way they don't mix when you go to put that epoxy on. Um, also what you want to do is after you've put the glitter on before you put the clear on you want to uh, take your cup and just cup it and really press that glitter into the cup just like so but we'll go over that more next week I'll show you more on that let's see here uh, so you've epoxied your, uh, cup and you've put on one or two coats of your epoxy. So next you're going to want to make sure you have, um, alcohol ink, 91%. It needs to be the 91%. I'm sorry, alcohol, just normal rubbing alcohol. Um, 91% that is going to help clean out the spray paint that's inside question Ruby Hidalgo would like to know where do you buy your epoxy the bigger bottles so I go through um, Hobby Lobby to buy my epoxy and it's the half gallon epoxy bottles so you're getting actually a gallon um, it's like eighty dollars for a half gallon so and that lasts me at least a month so um, with all the cups that I make um, but yeah just Hobby Lobby um, I use the Illuminite amazing clear cast and it is FDA approved so you want to make sure because your mouth will touch these even you know with if you don't use a straw you're gonna touch these and you want to make sure it's safe so uh, the amazing clear cast is FDA approved so you can once it's cured um, eat off of it drink out of it anything like that so and it's not gonna harm you um, so like I was saying you'll uh, clean with the alcohol and uh, just take a paper towel or I've got those uh, makeup 
sponges and I just go in there and wipe in there and then uh, clean it with hot soapy water. Question? Yeah, uh, Trinica Turner would like to know how long it takes for the toxic fumes to stop from the epoxy. And Latasha Randall uh, would like to know what the curing time is. Curing time um, is uh, three days, at least three days for it to be all cured. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't add on another coat of epoxy. So what that means is I can put, like when I do my glitter, I put my uh, epoxy, a very thin layer epoxy on here, I put the glitter on. I let that dry for about six hours. And because it's such a thin coat, it dries in that time. Then I can put uh, a coat of epoxy over this. I let it dry for at least 12 hours to where it's dry to the touch, and then I can put on another coat. Um, usually it's about three coats that you have to put on, but so 12 hours, and then I don't send the cup out until it's cured in my house for three days. So three days after it's done, that's when I send it out. Uh, Amber Sullivan would like to know, will Pro Marine epoxy work? Uh, Pro Marine, if that is FDA approved, I've never used it, so you might wanna check with manufacturing to see if you can use it. Um, but I've never used it, so I couldn't say yes or no, but yeah, check with your manufacturer. Maria Morales uh -huh. uh, wants to know how long you turn your tumbler with the epoxy. So I turn my tumbler uh, for six hours on the tumbler. And so it turns for six hours, and it's still tacky at that moment when I take it off and then, so I take it off and then I hang dry it for the other six. So then I can start another cup. And that's where these turners really come in handy because then you can just take it off here and put it up here. You don't have to touch the cup, anything um, to uh, hang it. So, and then you can just switch it out, you know, after the next cup's ready to hang. Um, another thing that you need is when you're, you've got your first layer of epoxy on after you've uh, put glitter or alcohol ink or whatever you're decorating with, you've put your first layer of epoxy on there's gonna be bubbles on it, and you wanna make sure to pop those bubbles. There's many different ways you can do this, and many different things you can use. One of the things that can be used is just a heat gun. And I know a lot of craft rooms have these little heat guns, and they work pretty good, um, especially if you're just starting out. Um, also, there's the, I always call this my industrial heat gun. Um, love this thing. It's a Wagner. Um, it gets a little bit hotter than the other one. You can take the, they, because they say flame is the best thing to pop those bubbles, um, you can take a barbecue, you know those long barbecue lighter sticks? You can take and use that. Um, or you can, let me find it here in my pile. I ordered one of these off of uh, Amazon. It's just a cooking torch. And you fill it with butane and it works really great um, to pop those bubbles with. Always make sure because if you're using alcohol ink and the epoxy is flammable, so you want to make sure you're moving it real quick across there. Question? Trinica Turner would like to know how much do you charge for your cups about? 
I start off, um, of course it depends on what size you're getting, and like the 12 ounce start at $25. It goes up from there. My, I've got a 40 ounce Hydrosport bottle that is $55. So it all depends on what you're getting, what design. Um, I've got a design on my Etsy page at Mindy's, Mindy's Craft Shack US on Etsy that actually has dragon scales on it. And I actually charge about $5 more each cup because it's really time consuming to put those dragon scales on. Um, so yeah, they start at $25. Um, also, don't forget, I and I uh, have glitter too that I sell. And you can get an ounce for, um, they start at $4.50. My mixes and my chunky holographic uh, start at five. Um, one thing about glitter that I've learned through this is you want to make sure that it's not just ordinary crafting glitter. You want to make sure it's the polyester glitter. So um, the reason why I say that is because like for example with the black glitter, if you, I've used that and it was crafting glitter, put it on, it looked beautiful, beautiful. I put my epoxy on and it disappeared. The glitter actually did not shine anymore. It just went to like this matte looking black. I don't even know what, I was just so disappointed. Question. Yeah, Terry Ely, uh, doing this a little bit late, wants to know where's the best place to get blank cups? Blank cups? Go to, I get mine through Stainless Depot. She's got a lot of good sales on them. Um, and she's out of New Jersey. Uh, if you're just starting out, uh, I had mentioned in the beginning that to practice on, go to the dollar store, get yourself some of these stainless steel cups. Um, they're not the best, but they're great to practice on let's see what else um, so on your turner uh, for your wands I have seen a lot of people spend a lot of money for like these uh, foam things that you can get to put on your wands through Amazon and I don't have anything against that at all my thing is I try to do things that don't run me a lot of money so I don't have to turn around and charge more if I don't have to so what I've done is you can use those footballs the little Nerf footballs that you get at the dollar store or what I've actually gone to is these sponges right here and actually this is just half of it it's uh, I get this at the dollar store and it is one of those sponges that you wash your car with I just cut it in half and apply it to the the uh, wand and um, the reason why I like these because no matter what cup I have it scrunches in there nicely and it holds it really really well it's not going to come off of there until you pull off the cup <laughs> but again easy to take out and I love these things. Um, like I said, a dollar, and you get two because uh, you cut it in half. And they fit in all my cups. So I really enjoy those. 
I like them better than the footballs because um, the footballs, you know, there's, you can find more than one size, but if you're doing more than one size cup, you have to get that many sizes. With this, you just have to buy one and those will fit in all your cups. Another thing that I use to help take off paint inside the cup is acetone. And I actually got this bottle of acetone. It's 100% acetone. I actually got this bottle at Walmart, but I know you can get it at the dollar store also. And um, only use it inside the cup. Do not put it to the epoxy on the outside. You will ruin your cup that way. Question? Tourniquet Turner, Turner would like to know, does it matter how fast your cup turns? No, uh-uh. Um, you don't want it going really fast, but with these, they only, uh, the motors are, uh, what are they, 0.5, 6, Hertz or something like that. I'll have to double check and get back to you. But any normal turner, it will uh, just like a rotisserie. That's about how fast it'll go. And that's perfect. Um, if it goes any faster than that, I'm afraid it would just like, I don't think, I don't know if anything would happen to it, but you just want to use like a rotisserie motor that fast um, let's see what else oh if you don't have a turner you can still do this okay and you're just gonna do what's called a hang method for all your drying time and all that and honestly that's what I did when I first made my cup is a hang method and I I don't even remember how I did it, um, but I do remember I used a box and somehow managed to, uh, I had a wand and I managed to be able to uh, turn it every so often, keep it turning manually, um, while it dried. Um, so the first six hours was watching a cup and turning it every so often. Um, but I've learned that you can do what's called a hang method and you're just gonna do very thin layers and what I've done is I've gotten a paper towel holder, dollar store, and a pool noodle. Again, dollar store. Cut the pool noodle, apply it to that, and you can take your cup and do a hang method. And apply your uh, glitter. You can even use the scrunchies on this, okay? The foam sponges on this instead. So you're getting that nice tight fit but uh, this is just an old thing that I had still laying around. And uh, so it can be done without a turner. Okay. And I am going to be making a video for YouTube on strictly uh, just doing a hang dry tumbler. So I will be putting that up um, probably within the next couple weeks. Um, so we've gone over what we use to, uh, for your cup turner, uh, you're going to need vinyl if you want to personalize it, uh, you can use, uh, any type of vinyl, um, if you're using vinyl as a stencil, make sure it is the uh, removable vinyl. Also what I've done with a pool noodle is I've taken two rubber bands, cut a good amount of length off. It's probably about oh, eight inches or so 
and I use this. Let me make sure this is clear here. Hopefully you guys can see. It looks like you can. And when I'm putting my stencils on, boom, it doesn't move. It's nothing worse than chasing a cup when you're trying to put stenciling on or your vinyl on to personalize it. And you can just turn it any way you want and um, it just works really well. Um, also, when I'm, just the FYI, when I'm putting my decals on and vinyl, um, so I know I've got it in the middle, I use, I put my lid on there and I use my lid because it always has a lip there. I use that to guide me where the middle is. And then I can turn it over where the drink spout is and boom, right in the middle. So nothing fancy there. Um, there are times that you're going to get that epoxy inside the cup. And um, it can be difficult to get off. Um, you can just take your, like a weeding tool, um, like one of these, and pick at it. Or, what I have found works really well. Is a uh, hot knife. And I can just get under that. It melts it just enough to get under that in the cup. And it takes that right off. Um, I also use this when I use my Hydro Sports cups. I'll sometimes get glitter up here where the tape did not uh, cover. And I just take my knife, heat it up, and I just go along that edge. And it comes right off. You're not breaking the seal that way, which is very important. Yes. Terry Neely just posted that uh, Cricut posted a little video on making decals for tumblers so they allow for the curve. Oh. It's a template, and he, uh, Terry's just sharing this. Uh, so it's awesome. Thank you. Um, that is great. Um, I will have to give that a look-see at because uh, it is hard to – I measure – so I got my tape measure. It's just a sewing tape measure. But going through and measuring your cup, and yeah, it's hard to do that curve um, and laying that vinyl on. I know I was going through that last night when I was doing a cup, and I had to do it like twice, cut it, uh, the pitcher out twice because the first one it messed up, and ugh. So good to know. Thanks. So everybody um, on Cricut, they just put a template for curved cups and uh, tumblers. So that'll be great. Um, if you have a Cricut, uh, go to Cricut and look that up. So that's great. Um, yeah, anybody that has any advice or any extra hints or anything like that, let us know, definitely. I always welcome any, you know, advice, anything like that, because we're all here to help each other. Amber Sullivan would like to know if the hot knife leaves burn marks on the stainless steel part of the cup. No, it doesn't. No, um, there is no burn marks on there, um, on that stainless steel cup. It, uh, but I don't leave it like sitting there. It's hot enough, it just cuts right through that, and you just go along that edge. So yeah, no burn marks. Um, also, make sure when you're doing that, if you do use a, uh, a hot knife, that you wear your mask, because you are melting that epoxy a little bit, and there are fumes coming off of it, so make sure you wear a mask.
even though your cut's dry, I would still wear a mask. Um, let's see, I think that is like the basic stuff that you need to start doing tumblers. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything. I, oh, I have. So when you're pouring your uh, glitter onto your cup, you want to make sure you at least have a piece of construction paper or um, paper plate um, and that it's bendable. I use, I actually use wax sheets um, that are folded in half. So when you're pouring your uh, glitter on and you're done pouring and you can just take this and you can do the same with the paper plate and construction paper and you can pour that glitter that's landed on your wax paper right back into your bottle so you're not wasting anything. Um, any questions? You guys have been awesome. This has been so fun. A lot of great comments today. Yeah, a lot of great comments. Um, just a, it's not a must, but it's just something I do. Um, I have this roller here, and I use it to, before I start doing my cuts, I use it, of course, to get any hairs. I have dogs, so I use it to get any hairs off. I also use it, uh, because glitter likes to fly around, I use it to clean up my countertops from that glitter. So I'm always trying to stay up on top of uh, making sure there's no glitter on the uh, countertops for when I do another one that doesn't require glitter. I had so much fun today. Terry, congratulations. You won the cut turner. You'll be getting that. Um, I'll be sending it off uh, beginning of next week. Um, I hope you guys all come and join me next week. Remember, we're going to be uh, learning the three different ways to put glitter onto your cup. So we'll be getting our hands dirty a little bit. If you have any questions or any ideas that you want to share, you can always post on my page. That's great. Any questions you have for me, Go ahead and message me. I will get back to you. Also, if you're looking for glitter, um, go to MCS Glitter Company on Etsy. And if you're looking just to buy a cup, um, want it custom made, go to Mindy's Craft Shack US on Etsy. Those will be uh, brought up onto the uh, comments. And also, if you're a little bit more ahead of anybody else, make sure you go to my YouTube page and Mindy's Craft Shack on YouTube. Um, subscribe to it. I'm putting up, I try to put up a video a week. Um, so thank you again for showing up and we'll see you again next week. Love ya. Bye.